This next section, 8.4, the trigonometric substitution. So here we have three different setups for substitution. So depending on if your integral involves a constant minus a variable squared, or constant squared plus a variable squared, or variable squared minus a constant squared, there is a way to solve the problem, okay? It will require substitution, and this is giving you the substitution. So if you're taking a review or a test, you want to have these three setups with you at all times, okay? Now, um, it gives you the triangles just so that you can kind of see where everything is coming from. So if you're doing an integral like this, you're letting u equal a sine theta so that you have opposite over hypotenuse. If I divide by that, that's opposite over hypotenuse. Um, and then this would be the same thing as adjacent over hypotenuse, which is cosine. Similar for this one and the same thing for this. Now the one thing about the last one is you have to be careful because the square root could equal that constant times tangent theta, or it could be negative of that constant times tangent theta. It depends on if your variable is greater than that constant, or if your variable is less than that constant, okay? Also depends on your um, theta, okay? If your theta is in, say, the first quadrant, like this one here, or if your theta is in the second quadrant, like this, okay? then a would still be a, but then this would be um, a negative down here. So you'd have to be careful. Pi over two to pi would be over here. Okay, so be very careful when it comes to this one here. It's really the square root value that's negative, but then they just divide it over and they have a negative a down here. Okay, so for example one, let's go ahead and try this one out. I do notice that this is the same as if a were three and u were x, okay? So what I'm gonna use is I'm going to use the first one since it has the constant minus the variable squared, which means my u is going to equal a sine theta. Well, this is u and this is a. So that means I'm going to say um, x is going to equal three sine theta. And I also know that the square root, the square root part is going to equal a cosine theta, which is three cosine theta. What I don't have is dx. So if I know what x is, I can find dx by taking the derivative. Derivative of three sine theta is three cosine theta d theta. So now I'm going to substitute each one of these pieces in. So this is going to become three cosine theta d theta over three sine theta squared and times three cosine theta. So the threes will reduce, the cosine thetas will reduce, and I'll end up with um, one over nine um, sine squared. And d theta. Now we do know that when we end up with an integral with just sines, or an even power of sines, that we should be using our power reducing formulas to simplify those so that we can actually integrate this. So if we go over and we find our um, power reducing formulas, we have this one here, which means I'm gonna pull out the 1 ninth, and then I'm gonna have one over one minus cosine of two theta over two d theta. Now remember the symbolization for um, one over anything. That just means the reciprocal. So if I wanted or if I needed, um, what I should be doing is taking the reciprocal of this. So you get two over one minus cosine of two theta. D theta. Now this is not really helping me get anywhere. Um, but I actually noticed one thing. 
Notice here you have one ninth, and instead of writing one over sine squared, you could write cosecant squared theta. And the reason why that stuck out to me is because if you look here, you actually have an integral for cosecant squared, which means I didn't have to do the power reducing formulas. Um, I could have just used this integration right here. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna erase these steps because those were not helping. I still had a trig function in the denominator without its derivative. And a lot of times in this class, you will try things and notice that they don't work. And so then you have to go back and try something else. Um, usually what I tell students is if you are doing that, um, don't erase what you have. I erase it to um, help with confusion because we're in the lecture. But when you're on your test, don't erase your work. Just cross it out and then continue. Because even if what you were doing the second time was wrong, but something about the first time was correct, I'm looking at both to see if I can give you the maximum amount of credit that I can. Um, so which one was more right is basically what I'm looking for, and that's the one that I'm grading. Um, so make sure that if you are doing that, um, to not erase, just put a big X and then keep going, okay? Because if you are doing something correctly, I can still give some kind of partial credit for it. So I end up getting negative cotangent theta. Um, and this is a def indefinite integral, so plus c, which means I get negative um, cotangent theta over 9 plus c. Now we have to be careful because cotangent theta means what? Cotangent theta is um, cosine over sine. And so I have to back sub here. So I'm going to back sub using these different pieces of information, these two here, okay, not the dx because I don't have any more d thetas. So when I back sub this, I'm going to get, for cosine, I'm going to divide both sides by 3, which means I'm going to replace cosine with this fraction here. So square root of 9 minus x squared over 3. And then for sine x, I'm also going to divide both sides by 3. So I'm going to replace sine of x with x over 3. Now the 3's will cancel each other out. So essentially what I end up with is the square root of negative, or the negative square root of 9 minus x squared over 9x plus c. And now that things are back in terms of x, I can box this as my final answer. Now I'm going to stop the recording here and we'll continue on the next page with another problem.